All right, coaches. So what we are about to look at um, is going to be live or game action from Gonzaga and some of the concepts that we talked about in our last podcast about forcing confusion, taking advantage, number situations. We're going to look at that right now in this game film. We're going to break that down and see how Gonzaga's goals about attacking and transition offense. They are one of the top uh, transition offense offense in the collegiate game right now as we speak i know they're ranked in the 91st percentile they are getting about 1.89 points per possession in transition um and they're one of the, they're one of the top teams in offensive transition um, right now as we speak which is a very exciting opportunity uh to be looking at them and talking about them um, so let me let me bring up some of their stats. Uh, they're ranked thirtieth um, in in NCAA out of like three hundred and fifty seven three hundred and fifty seven teams, um, and they are actually getting one point one nine five points per possession. They've played fourteen games. Um, they have they scored fifty seven percent of the time in their offensive transition and they're ranked in the 91st percentile in NCAA. Um, And this is why I think they're ranked number one besides they're playing great defense. They also are playing, they have a great offense, which allows them to have, I think, excuse me, a great defense. So let's go ahead and look at this. Um, This is their game versus Portland. We got multiple clips, but uh, I'll go back from time to time. And so in the previous podcast, I was also talking about lanes and helping out your point guard. So if you're a coach that wants to do transitional lanes and you have sides of numbers, right? So I call this, you know, if you go from left to right, if you're looking at it, if you're on offense, looking at your, the backboard, um, it goes from lane one, the middle of the floor is lane two, and the right side is lane three. So one, two, and three. And the reason why I broke that down would be, for an example, is if my point guard got the ball in lane three, I do not want him to make a pass from lane three to lane one. He has to get to lane two to make that pass to lane one to shorten up the pass. Um, So that's why I really have lanes and then it allows, you know, accountability of, hey, you know, two runs to the two side, you're running lane one, three runs to the three side, you're running lane three. And my big man, whoever doesn't get the rebound is running lane two, you're running down the floor, uh, rim runner whatever the case may be so if that's something you're interested in something i like to do go for it add that to to your package um to help you out but let's go ahead and look look at some of this film by uh gonzaga so portland has the ball forced a long shot so they got a rebound so right now this is where like we practice this all the time i know we practice this right where you know the defense has to get back and usually they have you know the offense only has three guys and defense uh or or the offense has five guys defense only has four but if you look at as we let this play out right we 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 created pressure on the defense i think with the blowout pass right so we talked about the three series in our law our last podcast with the blowout attack and ignite that's why i think blowout is very important but what was very key about this is number three from Gonzaga sprinted. He is on a sprint. He is on a sprint and he's putting pressure and beating the defense down the floor. This now makes that transitional pass so much easier by just sprinting ahead of the defense. So he sprints ahead of the defense. There's one, two, three, and one. Puts pressure on the defense and gets a foul out of that. So that's one thing is sprinting down the floor, getting ahead of the defense. Next thing, well, we'll stop it. So if we we look at this right now, the numbers are two guys are already back for Portland. We have one, two, three, four, five. So right now, if we look at this, Portland actually has an advantage on the defensive side, right? They got three guys back, two guys are still trailing to come and get in the pitcher. And then everybody is still on the backcourt side on Gonzaga. But with sprinting and creating that situation, right? We got two guys coming to the pitcher. We have one, two, three, but 
all of these three guys in Portland are up high, right? They're trying to figure out who has ball. So you create that confusion. And if it's a team that doesn't communicate, you get wide open shots, wide open layups. But if you, if we want to look at this, this may be a situation you might practice from time to time where you're in a four on three situation. You got a trailer coming in, stopping the ball. But with you sprinting ahead on offense and transition like Gonzaga is doing, you now put pressure on these three cats when the ball is up here they got to find out who has ball but if you look at this right now portland is looking at the ball and not looking around so sprinting ahead causes that pressure forcing who has who has the ball sprinting ahead get to the paint chance for a wide open layup again against portland boom they get it and they sprint zero second decision right now portland has an advantage with three we have one two three four on a sprint and again sprinting ahead of the defense great pass now the pressure is put on the defense right creating that confusion creating that pressure and they still have the advantage right they are back there's only one player technically back for gonzaga so it's really a three defense on two the offense already has the ball passed out but there's an advantage on the defensive side wide open layup sprinting again let's look at this against portland long shot boom they get it and they sprint portland's gonna have about three guys back but there's nobody sprinting on defense right now it's a three on three look right here for gonzaga three guys versus three but with his extra pass and a zero second decision, he gets it, he attacks. That's the zero second decisions that we are, we're talking about. We get a zero second decision, he then attacks. He either has to come over and help, he has to help, or he's gonna get a wide open layup. But with that zero second decision, didn't get to the help side in time, layup. And they do a phenomenal job of that. Long shot, they already have one, two, two, three guys right here in the backcourt. Gonzaga has all five players in the backcourt. They should have about three or four guys in the front court real soon. Portland has one, all five guys in the front court, and Gonzaga actually has three guys in the backcourt, four guys, um, if you want to consider that, but he just crossed the half court side. So right now, Portland is in a defensive advantage compared to the offense. And so right now, get a quick pass. It's a zero second decision, right? We, we, it created the confusion on the defense, right? The zero second decision allowed Gonzaga to actually take advantage of the lack and poor communication from Portland. Zero second decision, got in the paint, forced help. Um, but there was a big miscommunicational piece by Portland that allowed this easy layup right they're trying to scramble talk it out but with spreading ahead being a shooter spreading the floor um you you create confusion on the defense with that extra pass zero second decision you get into the paint to create to make some good things happen he gets into the paint wide open layup make good things happen Good, Portland has all, all guys back. Gonzaga has only two guys down the floor. Push the ball, blowout, sprinting ahead. Sprinting ahead, Portland has that advantage right here. Portland has that advantage. With his ability to push the ball ahead, sprinting the floor, getting out, look at the form. That means he's trying to push and put pressure on that defense. Sprinting ahead, you create Pressure on the defense, layup. So find out which, what's important. What are your important concepts that you want to master? So this is Gonzaga versus Pepperdine, their recent game. And Gonzaga forced a little turnover. Pepperdine has three guys in the, in the backcourt trying to get two there. So right here, if we look at it, it's almost like a three on three, right? One, two, three versus one, two, and three. 
one player has the ball, one player can get here and get shugs, um, and then this player can be filling in. However, with the extra pass, get into the paint, we have now two guys in this vicinity, nobody on Suggs, you get a wide open shot. And then like I told you before, you actually get great offensive rebounding in transition. So if you get this shot, Suggs miss, the JU comes and he gets an offensive rebound because when you're in transition, defense doesn't necessarily have a man, they got a spot if they're outnumbered, um, but you don't have your man right away in transition until you get set. And if you do miss that shot, you have a better chance to offensive rebound in transition because of that. And uh, JU was able to get great offensive position for an easy rebound put back. Again, force a long shot, hold him to one shot, boom, Pepperdine has four guys back, we have four guys in the backcourt for Gonzaga, right, so right now defense is at an advantage, but with Jalen getting into lane two, we have a rim runner putting pressure on the middle guy in the paint, we have guys sprinting on the outside lanes, Hit your trail man, zero second decision, attack the paint. He has two now cover him, wide open three, right? So with Jalen just making that pass to the trail man, but what was very important was not just his pass, but the trail man didn't stop. He made a zero second decision, got himself in the paint, two feet in the paint, forced two guys to help. With those two guys helping, somebody is now open. You're getting wide open shots in transition. Whether you make it or miss it is different, but you're getting these wide open shots. So he gets the lane two, he puts pressure on it. Big man gets in the paint, lands on two, turns, step, pass. Great chance for offense rebounding because they're not paying attention. Uh, you get great opportunities for easy baskets. Okay, again against Pepperdine, lob. Consider that a turnover. Gets it. Jalen is now is pushing the ball. Try to stop the ball early. One, two, three, four. There's pressure here. And then we have one, two, three, four guys from Pepperdine trying to run back to the front court to stop the ball. But right now, Jalen's in the back court. Um, and he's getting it and he's now pushing it, creating that pressure. Multiple effort play. Multiple effort play right here. Loses the ball, stumbles, fumbles, falls on it. This is where it's very important transition. Makes that pass back, this extra pass, right? Now we have one, two, three, four guys on Jalen right here. Trying to get the loose ball. Multiple effort plays right here. Swing it, swing it, get up. And he gets wide open layup, right? This is a lack of communication by Pepperdine and not seeing everybody on the floor, right? Everybody congested, they have shooters, sport, the floor is spaced. So since the floor is spaced, that's putting a lot of pressure. Somebody's gonna have to get out there. But with this great multiple effort play by Suggs, uh, this is giving Gonzaga an advantage, right? They were at a disadvantage. And it's if you look at this, it's only it's one, two, three, four, five versus one, two, three, four. Right? Gonzaga only has four players on offense. Pepperdine has all five guys on defense. So that's where my drills come from of you learning how to create advantages in disadvantaged situations um, with multiple effort plays. So this is great opportunity. Um, for Pepperdine to get a stop. However, with multiple effort plays and setting up and creating help, you get wide open layups. All right. Pull jumper, one shot. All right, so right now Pepperdine has one guy back. That means we have four guys going to the front court Gonzaga has one, two, three, four guys in the backcourt. With this blowout pass, we make a zero second decision. He now is aggressive and he attacks. He should be free, these two for these two, but his head is not looking here. 
but with him getting into this paint and then cutting through right this this cut by the big man running to the middle of the floor and this cut drags over the help now opens 22 but with number four getting to the paint paint creating that pressure actually on pepperdine he gets too far inside he's got two guys on him he is playing a two-on-one on the backside. these two guys are covering and there's one two three four versus one two three four five and the reason why i keep counting and bringing that up because i want you coaches to see that you it's very rare that your offense is at an advantage your offense is usually at a disadvantage so you have to now teach how do i get my offense an advantage in a disadvantage situation attacking cut two foot in the paint making one guy get two guys to cover him, forcing help all of these little concepts two feet jump stop all these little concepts are important to help you create advantages in your transition offense so that's that's why we're we're bringing that up and gonzaga sprints ahead they sprint the floor they cut hard they space the floor and they attack with zero second decisions and because of that i think that allows gonzaga to have phenomenal transition offense and all other teams that have great transition offense also does similar things that Gonzaga is doing but this I, I just think since they're number one in the country we can talk about it but you can also look at Xavier who's ranked number nine in the country and they're in the last time I looked they were getting about 1.3 points per possession but that was only 10 games in Gonzaga's at 14 points I mean 14 games in and then Drake Drake right now is still ranked in the top five or top six in offensive transition. Um, and they've increased the number of games in there and, and they do the same thing. They push the ball, they push the tempo, they blow it out, they sprint ahead, they attack the paint, force two guys to cover one and they create advantages on offense against, against a disadvantaged situation. That is very important to understand as coaches. And I think that's something you need to bring to your package within practice because we are more offensively and at a disadvantage more than we are at an advantage. So all the drills that we've been doing, I need you to rethink those drills and really look at what we're talking about here because it's evident that unless you turn it over, unless you get a block shot, your offense is usually at a disadvantage. So sorry to go on my soapbox, but that's a very important and key element that I'm trying to drill in for us to be really good at this offense transition. Layup. So then last, last one. Long shot, long rebound, because um, this is back at the top. So that last one was the last previous one, but you, you see some of the items that Gonzaga is doing and the pressure that they're putting on with uh, other teams. And since I, I'm, I'm enjoying this so much, let's go ahead and look at uh, Drake since they're one of the top teams as well. We'll look at four quick clips of Drake um, and near transition offense. And so we can see uh, how weather do. Drake is the blue team. They're playing against Southern Illinois. Um, but let's look at their offensive transition and some of the positive things that they do. Block shot. Okay, boom. Right now, Southern Illinois is running back. They have one, two, three, four guys. Four guys opportunity to have on defense, right? Running back to the front court. Uh, Drake's in the back court. Drake has one, two, three, four guys on the back court further than them. But they have one player sprinting ahead of the defense, right? You sprint ahead of the defense. You push the ball. You either blow it out, attack. Then you give yourself an advantage to be successful. With the blowout, zero second decision by number four. I'm either going to attack you, swing it, shoot it, but it's a zero second decision. They're not thinking about it too many times. That creates pressure now on the defense. Zero second decision. Who's going to be my help? How am I going to be able to get to rotate, attacking? Great opportunity to get to the paint. Zero second decision. Gets into the paint. Even though he shoots this shot, he has two guys helping him. 
but he has number one right here at the wing, wide open shot. So he did his job, two feet in the paint. He ended up getting this shot, but he could have made a jump shot, kicked the ball to this wing. Um, easy money right there as well. Again, long shot by Southern Illinois. Boom. Southern Illinois has four guys back on defense. That shot goes up. Southern Illinois has four guys back. Drake has only two guys running the floor, but they're sprinting, right? So when you sprint, spread, pressure. So there's not a blowout situation. The point guard looks to get something going. Love this zero second decision right here. There should be no reason why Southern Illinois is at the stop. Well, now he's a, apparently he's a shooter because 20 is now trying to stretch and get to the corner. But 33 is now at a disadvantage. He is now trying to take a guard at a full speed pace. But zero second decision by two, getting the paint, pressure, force a tough shot. Again, offensive rebounding. You can get a great opportunity to offensive rebound in transition. Bow, jump ball, but you create that kind of pressure on the defense. This is a blowout pass. Boom, you create that pressure. Two feet in the paint. I love it, I love it. Drake did a great job. Let's look at this. Blowout pass, right? So remember we talked about three levels, blowout, attack, and ignite. And I think a blowout pass is more dynamic than attacking. And attacking looks great, but I think if you can get a blowout attack, you're going to be phenomenal in transition. That means the defense is behind you. That means you're ahead. But then you blow out, attack, zero second decision, two feet in the paint. You are going to get some type of look, whether it's a layup, whether it's a shot for the attacker, or whether it's a kick out for a three. That is a phenomenal play. I truly believe in the game of basketball. So if we look at this situation again, the shot goes up. Drake only has two guys down the floor with the blowout pass, forces them to sprint right here, right now. We have a one, two, three, four for Southern Illinois. Drake only has two players in the front court. They have three players in the back court. They blow the ball out, which helps get that ahead. But with this zero second decision by 20, 20 gets into the paint. He creates help. They try to let it's a lack of communication. Boom kick wide open three last one uh, I believe by Indiana State from Drake great defense on Drake again great defense leads to great offensive transition so don't sleep I know everybody's uh, big on defense but you know if you haven't heard my podcast offense championships they're both very important because they one correlate to the other if one is poor the other one won't be as good but if one is really good the other one can be really good as well it won't be as bad but you need both to be really really good but offense wins championships defense gives you a chance and that's a whole nother thing check that podcast out but let's continue with this film with drake against indiana state Drake forces a tough shot. They get a rebound. Takes off. I love it, right? He gets it. He sees the rebound being being secured. He is in a dead sprint. You know, it, and I see a lot of games, what happens that a lot of guys sprint a little bit to half court and then they backpedal trying to see the ball. Bro, just tell your players to sprint. Get the head around. Look over their shoulder as they are sprinting. Sprint down the floor. Spread the floor. Create the gaps. Then you get more easy shots. But I love this look, right? We get it. Force a tough shot. We now get the ball sprinting. Sprinting until transitional lanes. One is going in lane one. One is going in lane three. Now the floor is being spread. We're in a four on four situation. One, one, two, three, four versus one, two, three, four. Numbers are even. It's a four on four situation. But with the point guard attacking, right? He didn't have the blow up. But with the point guard attacking, with the aggression that he does, I, I like to say a, a Russell Westbrook type of, of, of attack creates so much pressure on the defense. Now, who's going to stop the ball? Creating help allows you to get open shots and uh, open threes. 
I love it. With him being able to attack, he forced the wing player that was covering the wing. He now has to help. He's still, he's putting pressure on him to see the ball. The wing sees no eyes cut behind, right? So he's looking at the ball, anticipating who's going to stop the ball. The wing sees that. He cuts behind because he's not getting looked at. Easy money, easy backdoor, easy shot. Great job. And that's all by sprinting down the floor, not jogging, not tippy-toeing, not worrying about getting the ball. It's sprinting. The ball will come to you if you sprint. You will be set and you'll be ready to go. So we looked at two teams, two top teams in offensive transition, Gonzaga and Drake. And there's some key things that we have to remember that I think all coaches must do in their offense, and that's sprint and I think space. Um, I think you should add those two to to your concepts with it, right? Sprint and space, those two things. You sprint, you space, um, and then and then have levels of how you want to go about your transition. Blow out, attack, ignite, right? If you can't blow out, um, then if you can't blow out and attack, and if you can't just attack, then ignite your offense. Um, and I think you need to, again, create advantages and disadvantage situation. If you're in a four on four, how do you get the defense to move to create an advantage for an easy shot? If you're in a, a, a four on three, where there's three offense, four defense, how do you get two guys to cover one? So I, I want to leave you guys with those thoughts. And again, if you go to coachesmind.com, um, we're going to have some great drills for you to install in um, into your program that you can use um, for your program in the season, off season, whatever works best uh, for you. Check that out. Um, and we're excited to be giving you that opportunity to check that out. And if you like our content, be a member. It's less than 20 cents a day to be a member. Less than 20 cents a day to be a member. Um, and I know you guys spend more on food and other things in this world than 20 cents a day. So this is a great opportunity because we're dropping great knowledge for you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Coach.